Hello everyone, this is Tamara Linkowski again, um, making my eighth video of how God is changing me through the death of my daughter, Corinne. And this video continues to talk a little bit about suffering and walking by faith. Um, I kind of wanted to combine the two. 1 Peter 5.10 says, After you have suffered a while... Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Okay, um, I'm going to read this devotion. If you've got an iPhone or app store on your phone, buying, um, I don't think you even need to buy it. I think it's free. It's Charles Spurgeon, Morning and Evening. His devotions are amazing, and they really help you become grounded in the Word, which is what we all want, right? And so this is what he says. You have seen the arch of heaven as it spans the plain. Glorious are its colors and rare are its hues. It is beautiful, but alas, it passes away, and lo, it is not. So he's talking about the sky, how it's so gorgeous, comes and goes. The fair colors give way to the fleecy clouds, and the sky is no longer brilliant with the tints of heaven. It is not established. How can it be? A glorious show made up of transitory raindrops, how can it abide, and sunbeams? The graces of the Christian must not resemble the character of the rainbow and its transitory beauty. But on the contrary, they must be established, settled, and abiding. Seek, O believer, that every good thing you have may be an abiding thing. May your character not be a writing on the sand, but an inscription on the rock. Guys, what happens when we're tested? Like, if you squeeze a lemon, you should get lemon juice, right? And if you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice, right? And when God squeezes a Christian, we ought to bleed Christ. And if we don't, if what comes out is anger and resentment and bitterness then we need to examine ourselves because the very people that killed Jesus, he looked and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Is that your attitude? Is that my attitude? Like I'm, I'm saying all these things for myself, but I'm trying to share them so all of us can change. You know, may God use one person's life to change the lives of many. So he goes on. May your character not be a writing upon the sand, but an inscription on the rock. May your faith be no baseless fabric of vision, but builded of material able to endure the awful fire which consumes the wood, hay, and stubble of the hypocrite. Remember what God said? One day our works are all going to be tested, and some of the works are going to be wood, hay, and stubble. What does wood, hay, and stubble do in a fire? It burns, right? But others, the other works are gold, silver, and precious stones. And no matter how much you put those in the fire, they just get purified. And may God be able to say that about each one of us when we're tested. May we be, may that fire purify us so that we can come forth as gold. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what the purpose of fire is. That's what the purpose of trials are. So now listen to what he says. Notice, may your whole life be, I'm sorry, may, notice how the blessing is being established. May your whole life be so settled, may your character not be a writing upon the sand, but an inscription on a rock. May your faith be no baseless fabric of a vision, but may it be builded of material able to endure the awful fire which shall consume the hay and the wood and the stubble of the hypocrite. May you be rooted and grounded in love. May your convictions be deep, your love real, your desires earnest. May your whole life be so settled and established that all the blasts of hell and all the storms of this earth shall never be able to remove you. But notice, O oh friend, how this blessing comes. It is gained by the apostle's word pointing us to suffering as the means employed. After you have suffered a while, 
Notice it doesn't say after you have prospered or after you've got what you wanted or after everything went your way. It's only by suffering that God can establish and strengthen and settle us. It is of no use to hope that we shall be well-rooted if no rough winds pass over us. Those old gnarlings on the root of the oak tree and the strange twistings of the branches all tell of the many storms that have swept over it, and they are also indicators of the depth into which the roots have forced their way. So the Christian is made strong and firmly rooted by all the trials and storms in life. And shrink not, then, from the tempestuous winds of the trial, but take comfort, believing that by their rough discipline, God is fulfilling this benediction in you. That was so encouraging to me because sometimes we have this awful idea that bad things happen and everything is like a chastening of God or I must have did something wrong. That's why this bad thing happened. And a lot of times we make our own bed and we lie in it, okay? I mean, you know, if I'm smoking, I shouldn't wonder why I get cancer. If I'm drinking alcohol and can't control it and I just drink, drink, I shouldn't wonder why I get cirrhosis of the liver, you know? These things happen, but all, but when you're doing everything right, and you're trying to walk as close to God as you can and things still go wrong, that's because we live in a sin-cursed world and God has chosen suffering to create us into his, into, to make us into his image because of the sin that um, Adam committed eating from the tree. And so I want to end this with... Um, sharing verses about faith because suffering and faith go together because like I said if you if you're a Christian genuinely a Christian and trials come in your life you will bleed Jesus and if you don't at the beginning God teaches you to do it later on he will continue to test you until you bleed Jesus because the whole purpose of us living on this earth is to glorify God with our lives and so we want by the end of our lives, before we die and meet Christ himself, we want to, and be face to face with him, we want to um, learn how to bleed Jesus when we suffer. So look at these verses, okay? Hebrews 11. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, but the conviction of things that are not seen. The only way we're going to learn to suffer well is by faith. For it is the people of old receive their commendation. This is how the people of old receive their commendation. Think about this, okay? You want to know where science came up with atoms and everything? God came up with atoms way back when he wrote his word. Hebrews 11, verse 3. By faith, we understand that this universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen is not made out of things that are visible, right? Right? That's talking about atoms and molecules and things we can't see that this whole universe is made out of. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. Okay, this is Abel. This is the kid that died by his brother. Cain killed Abel. By faith, he died and he still speaks through faith. Okay, we all know about Abel. Why? Because God had put him in his word and God commended him for his faithful living. Now, how did Abel die? He got killed by his brother, guys. Like, he didn't deserve it, but it happened and God allowed it to happen. But God went to Cain and said, my gosh, your brother's blood is crying out from the ground. Because do you remember what happened in that story? Abel, God went to Cain and said, where's your brother? And, and sarcastic Cain said, I don't know where my brother is. Am I his keeper? And God said, his blood is crying out from the ground. What did you do to your brother? You think God didn't know what Abel, what Cain did to his brother? God knew. God knows everything. God sees everything. God knows if my daughter's death was, you know, 
Even if your child was murdered, God knows, and the Bible says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Our job is to forgive and move forward and live the rest of our lives glorifying Christ in the midst of our suffering. Okay, God's job is to take vengeance. And, you know, my daughter didn't die that way, um, but even if she did, my job is to forgive and it's God's job to deal with whoever would have murdered her if that was the case. I mean, I, I thought about that before. What am I going to do? I'm supposed I'm commanded to forgive. That's what I'm commanded to do. And I hope when I die, people will be able to say that about me, that I never held anything against anyone. By faith, Enoch was taken up so he should not see death. He was not found, but God took him. Now, before he was taken... He was commended as having pleased God. <clears throat> I read these verses and I think like, is that what people are going to say about me, Lord? Lord, I want to live in such a way that people will talk about me the way they talked about Enoch. Everybody said about Enoch that he pleased God. What did they say about Nathaniel? What did Jesus say about Nathaniel? He said, behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. I hope and pray people can say that about me. I hope and pray that God can say, Behold Tamara in whom there is no guile. Pray that God will use you in such a way that people can say that about you. You know, it's, it's easy. We can steal and cheat and lie and do all these things, but what good is it, friend? You're going to stand before God one day and all the things you did in secret will be made manifest in that day. You look at porn in secret, God is going to reveal all that. You can't hide it from God. You know, you get drunk in secret, you can't hide that from God. You know, you, you can't even hide that from this world. By faith, Noah being warned of, and oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to read verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. Do you know if you don't have faith, it is impossible for you and I to please God? All the good things that we do mean nothing to God without faith, okay? Think about something, friend. Imagine my husband and everybody knows he's this godly man. And he does everything right and he lets me be a stay-at-home mom and he gives me all these children and a beautiful house and like my dream world. But the only thing he does is cheat on me. <laughs> what kind of husband is that? What would you think of a man who does that, okay? That's what I think of when I think of this verse and people trying to do good works apart from Christ. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And whoever would draw near to God must believe, number one, that he exists. This is why I don't argue with atheists and agnostics. Like the Bible says, if you come to God, you got to number one, believe that he exists. Number two, believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And the other thing is, by faith, Noah, being warned of God concerning events that were not seen yet. You know, before the flood, I don't believe it rained. Nothing in the Bible talks about rain before the flood. And when God created the earth, the Bible does say um, water sprung up from the earth. As if God had like a, like a God-made um, sprinkler system that came out of the ground. That's what happened before. And if you read it, it, it kind of makes sense that that's what happened before. But Noah didn't even see rain, but God told him to build an ark. I'm sorry. God told him to build an ark, and he built an ark. And, um, and it says, By faith Noah being warned of God concerning events yet unseen. I mean, think about this. How many times... Does God warn us, hey, this is about to happen. You need to do this. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit is leading you to do something, but you don't understand why he's leading you to do it, but then you have to do it because you feel like God wants you to do it. This is Noah. He was being warned of God concerning events as yet unseen, but in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his house. You know what, he, what else he did by faith? By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. You know, when you act on faith, you're also condemning the world. And you're 
and and praying that God will that the world will see this and come to faith. That's our whole purpose. By faith, Abraham obeyed God when he was called to go out to a place to receive an inheritance. And he went out. He didn't know where he was going. Can you imagine God telling you, get up and leave your father and mother and go somewhere where I'm telling you? God didn't tell him where to go. He just said, get up and go. And Noah had, and, and Abraham had to walk by faith. By faith, he went out to live in the land of promise as a foreigner in the land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same pro promise. Do you know Abraham never saw his numbers um, as the stars of heaven like God said? God said, your seed, can you count the stars? That's how big your seed is going to be. Abraham died and never saw that. But he lived it by faith. He never saw it this side of heaven. But he is seeing it the other side of heaven. This is what I'm talking about, guys. I'm, I'm so encouraged when I read God's word. That's why I say, like, this is the only thing that can help me. You know, you finish reading this chapter. Um, by faith, he went to a land of promise. By faith, Sarah conceived. By faith, Abraham offered up his son Isaac, believing that God could even raise him from the dead. Like, you, you read all these things. They all died in faith, receiving these promises, but seeing them from afar and acknowledging that they're strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Do you realize that? These people believed we are nothing but strangers and pilgrimers on this earth. What, you know what else they believed? God's word, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Like we cannot be so attached to this world and all our blessings be earthly. We can't think like that. That's not what this Bible teaches us. This word teaches us that our blessings are heavenly. And although we might experience some earthly blessings on this earth, doesn't mean that we live for them, okay? I have all these beautiful children. I have a wonderful husband. I have a beautiful life. I'm not living for that. I'm living to glorify Christ in the midst of these blessings and I expect that suffering is going to come. And in the midst of my suffering, God is going to purify me because 1 Peter 5.10 says the only way I'm going to be made into his image and established and strengthened and settled is by suffering. So I shouldn't be surprised when it comes. Absolutely not. So I'm just, I'm just encouraging you guys. Guys, when I think about Corinne, like... My mind is not playing tricks on me. My daughter is alive, and she's more alive than I am today. And she has not been desensitized like this world has desensitized us. And God just took her ahead of me. And I really think that's what's helping me cope with this. Because, I, I mean, I have hard days. And, and they're, yeah, like I said previously, some days you just don't even want to exist. But you know what? I don't live for this world. I live for the world that's coming. I live for Christ. And so um, I can handle what he gives me because he enables me to handle it. I mean, without him, like I said, you can't even breathe, right? Didn't Jesus say that? Didn't Jesus say without me, you can do nothing? And so, friend, we have got to get our mind focused on eternal things. You know, the last thing you want to do is spend all this time and energy on your body, which, you know, you all know my, you know, I sell, my, my website is healthytreatsmarket.com and it's what keeps me alive, but I don't live for that. I don't live to be a size two. I just live to be healthy so I can serve my God. You can make an idol out of anything. You can make an idol out of your body. You can make an idol out of eating. You can make an idol out of ministry. I can make an idol out of having a lot of kids. Like, we got to be careful that our idol is Jesus and we want to live for him. For as many years as we're on this earth, God might not take me till I'm 90. You know, I need to live well till I'm 90. I need to honor God in my living till I'm 90. And that's what, that's what I want to say in this video. Like we need to understand that suffering is one of the ways God strengthens us, the way God strengthens us. 
And not only that, but if we suffer but we're not walking by faith, what good is it? It's impossible to please God if I'm not walking by faith. So thank you so much for watching. God bless you. I hope and pray that this video encourages you and teaches you more to get in the word, guys. Get in the word. Like I said, listen to Zach Poonin. Listen to um, Charles Spurgeon morning and evening. Get that app and just ground yourself in the word so that when the suffering comes, it's already up here. You already know everything. You let your mind speak to you truth so Satan doesn't mess with your mind and make you wallow in your sorrow and do all kinds of stupid things and believe all kinds of stupid things. You know, does God not love me? That's why he took my daughter? No. He's trying to teach me how to suffer well, just like he suffered well. And if it takes losing my daughter to learn to suffer well, bring it on because I want to die and I want the Father to see Jesus Christ. I don't want him to see tomorrow. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless you.